conditions that aren't what they seem, the shoulder. My name is Mary Lloyd Ireland. I've been in practice longer than I would like to admit, almost three decades, and I've seen a lot of conditions, tumors, things that aren't what they seem. I do have a website where publications and other videos are. You're welcome to visit the website. It's MaryLloydIreland.com. We also have a YouTube channel at the University of Kentucky that I would encourage you to visit as well. This is my, you may not have seen it, but it has seen you. I've seen conditions involving tumors, infection, and a lot of joints, but I'll show you some of the lesions that I've seen about the shoulder. Not everything is instability. Not everything is a slap tear. You have to have an astute eye to look at the individual, see if they're scared, put their story together. If they don't have a mechanism injury or have pain that is excessive or unusual, think about something that's bad. This is a 16-year-old right-hand dominant male who came in complaining of left shoulder pain. He does everything right-handed. He doesn't throw left-handed. He's a football linebacker and a baseball athlete. He didn't really have a specific mechanism injury. On his physical exam, the main thing was pain in the front of his shoulder, and he had a positive O'Brien's test, or weakness and pain, in position of maximal internal rotation, thumb down position, with his arms forward, that got better when he put his palms up, or palms up toward the ceiling. I really thought he had a slap tear. He really hadn't had any instability, but in this 16-year-old, you might think of an anterior instability or a differential diagnosis that was way down the road was a proximal humeral lesion, but I thought of that because he really didn't have an injury and it's his non-dominant side. Here's his plain x-ray, AP view and internal rotation, striker external rotation. Didn't really see any definite lesion on this. However, retrospectoscope, that's 2020. This looks normal. This looks a little funny in the proximal humerus. A little sclerotic here and radial opacity around it. This is the transthoracic view or the Y view. That looked completely normal. This is the coracoid out in the front. This again shows perhaps a abnormality of radio opacity in the front of the shoulder, front of the um, humeral head. Did do an MRI scan on him. This was without intraarticular gadolinium. I thought twice about doing an MRI scan because he had classic signs and symptoms of a slapped hair, but I did an MRI because he didn't have an injury. It was his non-dominant side. Not every shoulder has to be imaged prior to surgery, but I'm certainly glad that I did in him. The suspicion was it was a slap tear, but you can see there's a space occupying lesion right here. So here's his bicipital groove. Here's his biceps. This is the biceps, but this is this space occupying lesion of his bicipital groove. The labrum, however, looked great. This is the bumper of the labrum in the front, bumper of the labrum in the back. So normal labrum, but he definitely has a reason to have proximal biceps pain, and that was because of a mass proximal humerus. This is shown with a yellow arrow. So on the other views, the coronal views, you can see this looks to be a mass in the bone. It's a cartilage matrix. Again, the labrum looks great. No problems with the labrum. Bone scan showed increased activity diffusely about the proximal humerus. This is the involved left side. This is his right side. Otherwise, the bone scan looked normal. 
This is a CT scan, which showed a well-corticated, thickly bordered proximal humeral lesion, as you can see right here. Small peripheral snowflake radio densities, and no calcification or anitis. Differential diagnosis of this proximal humeral lesion, osteodosteoma, atypical inchondroma, infection with sequestrum, chondroblastoma, osteochondritis to secans, and chondroblastoma was the number one diagnosis, or a Codman's tumor. This is at a time of surgery. We had him marked so we knew exactly where the lesion was. No scope was done, unusual for a sports medicine surgeon. Do an open approach. Here is the lesion marked with indelible ink at the time we got a CT scan before this. This is the open procedure. The operative findings were a thick cortical bone, brownish appearance of the tumor, lesion was just lateral to the biceps, excisional biopsy without bone graft was done. So this is what the excisional biopsy area looked like. Biceps was smashed but was normal and left in position. The characteristics of classic chondroblastoma are a cartilaginous matrix, rich cellularity, round distinct cells, and giant cells, multinucleated giant cells. The original description was by Codman in 1931. The diagnosis was reclassified as chondroblastoma of bone after Codman described this as epiphyseal chondromatous giant cell tumors of the upper end of the humerus. I've been looking all my career for this and it took 25 years to find it, but I did find a Codman's tumor or a chondroblastoma patient did well after his excision. Next case is a 12-year-old soccer athlete. He had had pain in his left shoulder for one to two years. No injury. So you have a non-dominant shoulder that's painful in a soccer athlete. You wouldn't think they're doing much with their shoulders unless they fall down, have an injury, or do a lot of overhead throws. He had normal stability. He had a mildly tender, firm axillary mass. So again, no history of injury, 12-year-old, non-dominant side soccer athlete with an axillary mass. Think about something bad. I suggested an MRI scan to his mother. She didn't want to have that done. Fortunately, his aunt was a pediatric rheumatologist and insisted that they do as I said. So they did have an MRI scan done. This is what the MRI scan looked like. So this is, again, a view um, looking at the glenoid. And you can see here where there's a space occupying lesion in the front. Here's the coracoid. Here's the glenoid. And a relatively big soft tissue mass anteriorly. This is the axial, axial view. Biceps is here. Mass is anterior. Everything else looks normal except for the mass. The diagnosis was a synovial cell sarcoma. He underwent limb salvage of the sarcoma with resection and chemotherapy. And he did very well without evidence of recurrence now 10 years following excision of this synovial cell sarcoma makes me sleep better at night to have made a diagnosis and this is a situation where imaging of an MRI scan is very helpful. Plain films were within normal limits. This is a 22 year old left hand dominant male who had multiple osteochondromas. Some had been removed. His girlfriend noted that there was scapular asymmetry where he had winging of his left scapula if you look at these plain x-rays, you can see this mass, bony mass, with surrounding radiolucency. 
indicating a chronicity. This was an osteochondroma, and since it was central, he underwent excision of the osteochondroma. So this is a true reason for scapular winging, a space-occupying lesion, an osteochondroma. It was suggested that he undergo excision of this because it was a central lesion and there could be risk of malignant degeneration in the central osteochondroma. This is the AP view of the scapula. This is a modified scapular Y view. So everything looks good here, but you can see this space-occupying lesion between his scapula and his ribs. Again, here is his glenoid here. And then this is posterior showing this lesion. This is his 3D CT scan showing this bony lesion consistent with an osteochondroma. The bone itself of the scapula was not reacting. The scapula is a very thin bone, so there was that radiolucency around the base of the lesion. Excisional biopsy resulted in an excellent result. Winging was improved, and he is doing well. So we must remember to examine the scapula. Look at the scapular position. You have a normal and a not so normal side to compare to. Typically the scapula position changes due to the glenohumeral problem. You can have a primary scapular problem, but if you have atrophy of the musculature, you must think about either a chronic rotator cuff tear, if it's in the supraspinatus, or something going on neurologically, such as a neurologic stretch causing supraspinatus, infraspinatus wasting and injury to the suprascapular nerve or above coming from the cervical spine. If the scapula is unstable, shoulder problems will result. An unstable scapula is similar to firing a cannon out of a canoe. So if you think about trying to throw a baseball, if you have scapular instability, you're going to end up having a shoulder problem or an elbow problem because you don't have that stability necessary proximally of the scapula. And in the throwing athlete, you also want to think about their opposite hip. That should be strengthened as well. So think about a cannon out of a canoe. Not very successful. So if the cannon's backing up, who knows where the fire is going to go. Scapular dysfunction, if it exists, the shoulder function is like firing a cannon out of a canoe. Remember the scapula. Examine the scapula. There can be tightness anterior in the shoulder. The head typically is forward. The musculature in the front are overdeveloped, overdeveloped pectoralis, deltoid. The muscles in the back are atrophic, not functioning very well because people can't see them. To strengthen and improve scapular thoracic function, you should have the individual put their elbows to their back pocket, try to touch the medial borders of their scapula, do shrugs, and try to get them to visualize the scapula as a clock and have that clock go clockwise and counterclockwise. So work on the scapula first before you work on the shoulder. If the scapula has dyskinesis, working on the shoulder is not going to improve them. you got to fix proximal first. Also look at the thoracic spine and the neck. As with any groups of muscles, there are agonists and antagonists. So look at protraction and retraction of the scapula. Typically, if you have scapular dyskinesis, the scapula is more protracted or it's more superior than the opposite side. So knowing what the muscles are that oppose each other, protraction and retraction, is helpful. Another way to think of it is rotation. You can have external and internal rotation. It can go upward or downward. And in Kentucky, we like to dumb some things down. So you got your taters, 
that would be your retractors and your protractors. You got your elevators, the upward or downward. And you got your tilters, posterior and anterior. And you got your tractors, your protractors and your retractors. So think about these as being opposing forces. And you must get the scapula back down more central and inferior before successfully returning an athlete to do an overhead throwing activity. So remember the scapula, remember the position of the head and neck and thoracic spine and fix that first before allowing the athlete to go back. The rotator cuff will be much happier if their scapula is in the right position. This is an individual who was doing forward dumbbell presses and if you look we took his shirt off obviously he came in with shoulder pain he didn't know there was anything wrong with his scapula or anything wrong with his nerves so if you look here this is the normal side see how there is an indentation here or a holler as we say and this is atrophy because he had a suprascapular nerve stretch this is an asymmetry and he has weakness not because of a primary rotator cuff problem but because of this stretch doing 20 pound dumbbell forward flexion where his suprascapular nerve got stretched. This was fortunately temporary EMG nerve conduction velocity was done and he recovered completely. He can do certain things like he can do dips but look at that asymmetry so if you see asymmetry like that think about a neurologic problem as in this individual from a stretch doing repetitive type things he can do pretty well but if his scapula isn't functioning because of the atrophy of the muscles if he does things overhead he's going to potentially have further injury to his tendon which is right now because of weakness because of his neurologic stretch this individual had had a slap repair done of his left shoulder five years before he comes in with complaints of left shoulder pain, which I thought was going to be a recurrent slap tear. He's a golfer, right-handed. So we ask him to do some golf-specific things. And you can see here how his scapula wings coming back around. So his problem was a scapular one, and we addressed his scapula with strengthening, doing shrugs, doing elbows in the back pocket, and this improved so he had a primary scapular problem not a recurrent slap tear so take their shirt off have them reproduce what problems there is occurring with the specific sport and this is just doing a backward press you can see there's asymmetry where that scapula is very much forward in position and there's a greater distance between the transverse processes of the back thoracic spine and the scapula on the left compared to the right and it is a little protracted elevated so in conclusion don't order a test if you can't read it if you can't read the MRI scan a better test to do would be a consultation with somebody who knows shoulders communicate with a radiologist at your imaging center a bad scan is worse than no scan. In Kentucky, we have many MRI scanners. Shoulder scans are notoriously bad if ordered by someone who is unable to examine a shoulder. Sometimes the MRI report just doesn't help. This one is actually in Chinese, and this makes a little more sense to me sometimes than the x-ray readings of the shoulder by English-speaking radiologists. There are some things that don't translate into Chinese. Dr. Lachman, this was an MR of a knee, doesn't have symbols, and CT and MRI scan. So communicate with your radiologist and hopefully he will communicate better in the report. All MRI scans of the shoulder have some abnormality. Oftentimes it's a chromial slope or something like that, but I've never seen a normal MRI scan reading of a shoulder. So if you want to find something wrong with somebody's shoulder, do an MRI scan, and then you have to talk them off the MR cliff. They oftentimes think they're going to have a significant problem if they don't have surgery. Listen, look, examine, then listen, look, examine again. This cartoon, I'll have to do some x-rays to be sure, but I'm guessing you dislocated your shoulder. 